Welcome, audience, to this amazing forum. Of course, I have Huiling and Janet on stage uh, with me, and very pleased to see both of you uh, dynamic women uh, to do this next session, which, of course, is all about collaboration uh, between fintechs and banks. Now, we know that ASEAN is uh, waking up to a new dawn, uh, people's lives being dramatically changed by smartphone apps, uh, digital platforms as well, all to meet the lifestyle needs of these consumers. So we know tech companies are making inroads into the finance sector with fintech firms, of course, becoming the new norm. That's why we're all here today, right? So at the same time, though, we're seeing established banks uh, like UOB and others continue to pursue different strategies to try to introduce uh, innovative financial solutions that will meet consumers' increasing demands. So there is now very much a sense of collaboration, and that is the way forward for traditional financial institutions and fintech firms. But what truly is the best way and the best path to long-term growth. And this is why we'd like to hear the views of these two amazing women on stage. So let's set the scene. We start with uh, Hui Ling. Tell us a little bit about the story behind uh, Grab, because we know you were actually in a, a management consulting firm to begin with in San Francisco. Why did you decide to join a startup? Well, that's like seven years ago. So basically, before I moved to San Francisco, I actually was based out of Malaysia doing the same job. And as you probably know, consulting, late hours, had to find a way of going to work and back from work at the wee hours in the day. And in Malaysia back then, there was no GPS, there was no smartphones, taxis were unsafe. You would see headlines if you were to Google world's worst taxis, unfortunately, the front page would come out with Kuala Lumpur as your consistent hits. That was a world that I got used to, right? My friends, my family, myself. My mom used to literally do manual GPS tracking with me. Literally, I'll tell her when I'm leaving the office, she'd know about 30 minutes away from home. At certain traffic lights or Pizza Hut turnings, I would say, I'm here now, I'm here now. And if I did not check in, she would literally start calling and SMSing me in fear. Right. That was the situation, also because my work used to end at like earliest 11 a.m., <laughs> latest 3 a.m., right? So that was the problem that we were trying to solve. And once smartphone technology came about, we realized we had an opportunity to change that. We therefore built what is now Grab, which has you know, rating systems for the drivers, GPS tracking so you can share your ride. We even now have things like in-app chat, emergency uh, SOS buttons, and lots of technology and operational innovations that we brought to solve this initial problem. That was a start six and a half years ago. Now um, we're solving more and more daily, everyday problems that Southeast Asians face. And I guess here today, I'm here to talk about Grab Pay, Grab Financial, which is our effort to solve financial inclusion for the majority of Southeast Asia, which is unbanked mm -hmm. and underbanked. Fascinating. Now, Janet, tell us a little bit about your story at UOB. Two parts. It's been extremely fulfilling and very tough. Okay, I won't kid you. Very fulfilling because since I became a banking professional, I always understand that the role of a banker is to solve customers' problems, help them, make them successful. So it's been fulfilling at UOB because we now have the ability, together with the leadership team under our CEO, to formulate all the strategies that can improve customers' lives, from making sure there's no digital divide with the silver generation, we spend time to educate to make sure that they're not left behind, making sure that visually impact can use our ATMs, making sure that SM SMEs go digital, which is us helping a lot of these SMEs transform and adopt digital solutions. So many of these initiatives are now possible because I'm now 
part of the strategic process that the leadership team puts together and look at it closely with a Asia, Singapore, ASEAN lens, right? But I would kid you, it's of course very tough. It's very tough because, you know, people say, FinTech, TechFin, disrupt, kill banks, eat lunch, take supper, no more lunch, no breakfast, no, eat, no meal, we shouldn't be sitting here. It's all this, you know, I kill you, you, you will not be here anymore kind of situation. That's been the narrative for a long time. And then we said, but no, the world can really be a better place. We can collaborate, but we will have to first show the way. It is tough because there's competing demands, there are different views, but I think once the bank gravitate back to the customer, once we focus back to what customer needs are, what customer segments we want to help, the unbanked, the underserved, many of our clients today who can still grow their business better. I think once we get that, I think all the pieces fall in place. We ran hackathons, we got our staff to contribute 2020 ideas. We had many of our clinics to help SME Eastern Digital. We rolled out many fintech solutions with PayKey, Insight MyKey, AI solutions with Tukitaki. Many of these are now part and parcel of what we do. So it is tough, but tough make us stronger. Tough make us better. And for those of you who are professionals who wants to join banking, join us at UOB because it's tough, but it's a <laughs> great and exhilarating experience. Well, you certainly got me going there. Now, against this really dynamic backdrop that you've both outlined, let's take a look at the challenges. We know there are many challenges. As you said, Janet, it is tough. So let's take a look at that first challenge. It's all about cultural differences. The notion that fintech companies are simply too different uh, to actually make for successful collaboration. So let me ask you again, Hui Ling, uh, tell us about Grab. How does your innovation approach uh, differ from UOBs? Well, I'll start with, I guess, a bit of data just to share what has happened over the past few years since we started the company. We're now in eight Southeast Asian countries, serving 235 cities with more than 125 million downloads. In order to get there from six years ago to now, I guess moving fast, learning fast, iterating fast, and looking for ways to scale with technology and partners has been an important thing for us. So in the space of financial uh, inclusion and financial institutions to date, we actually have more than 60 financial institution partners across the region from global, regional to local partners. I think recently you've probably seen some news of us partnering with MasterCard, um, the likes of Maybank, you know, Chubb, um, Credit Suisse on, the list goes on. And the reason why we do this is because we know we have a big problem to solve, which is financial inclusion. And they know that we understand Southeast Asia's customers the best. When you hear about all the lists of potential partners I just talked about, you'll realize that some of them are what you call more startup-y. Some of them are more from heritage banking infrastructure. And to us, to be honest, we don't differentiate. What we care about are two broad things. One is a top-level shared objective. If we know and believe from our conversations that we are truly here, not just to talk, but to actually do what matters in an aligned fashion, huge tick in the box. The second one is how we intend to do it. Can we listen, learn, iterate and work together. Because I think it'd be naive for any of us to say that we ever find a perfect partner that has the exact same culture. There will always be differences. But what is more important is how we intend to bridge those differences together. And doing that, I think, has been extremely fulfilling for us today. We now have six e-wallet um, licenses in Southeast Asia. 
And in a short six months since launching Grab Financial Group, we've actually now become the largest wallet in Southeast Asia. Fascinating. Well, let's take a look at uh, challenge number two, which is all about systems architecture and uh, the notion that, you know, we've been talking about established banks, uh, legacy platforms, um, are they potentially agile enough uh, to keep up with the changes that we're seeing. We know that tech companies certainly are known to rely on open systems uh, such as APIs, while of course banks, many of you here in the audience, tends to have a fairly closed architecture, right? So Janet, can I get your perspectives uh, and your thoughts uh, before getting Ling's perspective? So it's two very large words, system architecture. If we distill it and we ask, what systems are for? What do we want systems to do for us? What does it mean for our customers? What does it mean for the community? I think first and foremost, as a bank with 19 countries operating with 500 offices with millions of customers, we have to make sure that we have a robust, safe system that is resilient, that can process tons and tons and loads and loads of transactions and store information safely, securely, and be there always. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ravi said, right by you. Right? So, so that we have. We have that core banking system that cuts across all our regional subsidiaries, consistent, efficient, is a workhorse. It is a solid workhorse, does very well. But what we've been aware, to be relevant, to stay ahead and to compete in this digital revolution, we were not born digital. They were, grab world. We have to become digital. So we've invested $1.2 billion over the last three years, 2014 to 2017, all about building digital capabilities from data architecture to API gateway to making sure that we have cyber security practices and solutions in place and investing in mobility and payments. And that's why we could come up with UOB Mighty in less than 10 months. And now, with the data in place, we believe that data, money, and goods, we call in Chinese, san liu he yi, we will have that power to use it to enrich our customer's life, to personalize, to customize, and then use data for AI purposes. And we have many, many of that solutions. Visit our booth and you'll see uh, that we use it for managing a risk, we use it for being able to do KYC mm -hmm. and help in credit scoring. So I think system architecture is something, it's not just system, but process and people. And I think together, we have spent a lot of time to be as agile, but yet safe and robust as possible. Hmm. Very reassuring. And uh, Hui Ling, did you have anything to add to that? A lot of similarities. Yeah. I'll draw an analogy right now. In order for a team to work, you need two people. And two individuals will always be different. We share genetic differences, communications differences, and just cultural differences. And draw that analogy to a technology infrastructure, right? You can build any, systems, any system in, in a billion and one different ways. But ultimately, what matters is what Janet mentioned, which is what is it there for? And what do you prioritize? And therefore, is it in a way that can be collaborative? Similarly, for agile or more heritage systems, we strongly believe in safe and secure systems. We also strongly believe in developing it in a way that is scalable to reach as many people who need it as possible whenever they need it. What we at Grab have is the fortune of starting our architecture a bit later. So what that means is we have access to the latest software engineering technology you know, ways of thinking, database systems, infrastructure that did not exist before when UOB started many decades ago. And what we then do is we learn from the expertise of UOB because they know the customers so well, what they care about, how the architecture was designed to solve these needs, and then we bridge it in a way that makes sense for both systems and ultimately both customers.
Great. Now, really crucial, you mentioned the word collaborative. That is actually our third challenge. So let's take a look at that. The collaboration model. Can fintech firms and banks uh, be partners on an equal footing? So, Huiling, let me ask you again. What's your view on this very uneasy relationship between banks and fintech companies? Because let's face it, certain countries like uh, the UK, for instance, a lot of the fintech firms are already challenging banks for their business. So are you potentially taking that route eventually? Is this something we're going to hear about? That's strongly what we don't believe in. Um, at Grab, we care about a partnership-first model. My dearest co-founder, Anthony, he likes to say this proverb, which is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's exactly what we've been executing on. I mentioned that we have 60 plus partners to date. Wink, wink, there will be more coming very soon, right? It's because of this true underlying belief that together there's more to serve, that so many partners actually want to work with us. We have excess, but more importantly, we have the heart and will and want. Now, at the same time, it's not easy. So there are a lot of challenges on the ground, and which is why I mentioned in the earlier section, as long as we share the vision, as long as we share the willingness to want to learn and make mistakes with each other, that's what matters. And that's true collaboration, isn't it? Now, Janet, with UOB, we know one of the largest banking groups in the region, a huge customer base in this region as well. How would you work with fintechs on an equal footing? I think I have a slide that kind of explain it. Maybe someone would bring it up and I would... It's a little bit small. People say and that bank could become dumb pipes. Right? Ecosystem, fintech, all will be the front and then will be disrupted. Or ecosystem partners will dominate and be the front and disintermediate us. Now, we don't believe that in Southeast Asia, that set of conditions are as such. We believe that in Southeast Asia, the conditions and the environment are conducive, are conducive for banks, fintech, and ecosystem partners, like-minded ones, like-minded ones who believe that we together can give more value, can create more value for our customers and for the community. And that, we believe, is the likely model. We don't want to become invisible. We want to be right by our customer, to be trusted, to be their partner along the whole way. We don't want to disappear from the face of the earth and, and then be done, right? So this is the partnership model that we think will become what defines financial services industry and fintech coming together. All right. And in terms of walking the talk, could you and tell so us more? I now take great pleasure. And we both believe that we should walk the talk. And we should walk the talk. And I like to use this opportunity to make a public announcement today. We're extremely proud. UOB and Grab takes this opportune moment to announce our strategic alliance across the whole of ASEAN, where we will bring digital services to digital consumers, the ever-growing base of digital consumers across the whole of ASEAN. And with that, we want to be able to empower our highly mobile-first Grab users to avail the suite of financial services that we can extend. It will broaden our reach, Huiling said, go far, go wide, scale. And that, in one suite, is what we want to do. And I'll leave Huiling to say about what Grab gains from this. Yeah, um, so, Janet, thank you so much for kicking this off. Folks, we are thoroughly thrilled to launch this partnership live and announce it live at FinTech Festival. Right, right, yeah. It means a lot to us because, as Janet mentioned, it is going to be a regional-wide partnership one where we can bring the best of UOB's know-how, expertise, understanding of all the different types of consumers and customers in Southeast Asia, and pair it with the reach that we have across the millions and hundreds of millions that we serve. Now, talking about collaboration on this front, we strongly believe that this is actually going to make the pie 
larger. We're not at all competing. Janet mentioned it. We all have a part to play, and we believe that this is a significant step forward for UOB and for Grab as well. Last but not least, I also do want to mention that I think this particular partnership, and, and I'll do two beautiful uh, co-founders. Yi Chong is here as well. Thank you. I can see you in, in the crowd. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, what this means to us is really important because it is our latest strategic partnership that is a suite of partnerships that we at Grab have been launching because we have become the go-to partner for all world-class, best-in-class financial institutions that care about understanding Southeast Asia's needs and serving it. More than half of Southeast Asia is underbanked, uh, unbanked, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So together, we believe we can serve these folks better and faster. All right. Well, And I, I'll let you in a little bit more. We will have exclusive credit card partnership in Singapore. <laughs> we will have that across the region. Look forward to great value look forward to great discounts. We also want to make sure that the services that we have, the digital bank that we want to launch is going to be embedded in a Grab app to give you seamless, great connectivity and to make banking, payment, daily transportation, food ordering, and so on and so forth, a breeze. And that's our contribution to the ASEAN community. At this point, I mean, we know it's an exciting announcement. At this point, as a Grab user, as I'm sure many of you in the audience are, um, how is it going to impact consumers? Because I'm thinking, I need to go out and get a UOB card now. <laughs> Do I? You should, um, because with this partnership, we're going to be rolling out a lot of rebates for Grab UOB users. Um, and of course, more privileges. I, I think I discovered you're a Platinum user backstage. Yes. I use you far too much, as I'm sure many people in the audience do. Yes! <laughs> Hopefully that's a greater thing, and as you mentioned, go get your UOB card, right? Beyond that, I think very soon, particularly for Singapore since we're here, you're going to be able to directly link your bank account to the GrabPay wallet. So today, you can do this by credit cards and debit cards. With this partnership, we'll be opening it up for direct integrations, so you can top it up with your bank account. Easy, convenient, so Sharanjit, what say you? I think I'm going to have to go out and get one of these cards, it seems, as, as does most of you in the audience who use Grab, who haven't got a car like me. But once again, uh, a big round of applause to our two amazing dynamic women here on stage. Congratulations once again on this strategic partnership, and uh, I hope, audience, uh, you'll have a, a great rest of the day. I believe we are the panel before lunch, so... Enjoy. Great to see you all. Thank you. <laughs>